Welcome to the fifth tutorial of Key Stage. So in this tutorial, I'm going to talk about custom translators of Key Stage. So custom translators basically changes the incoming MIDI signals, either note signals or control change signals, uh, either filter them or manipulate them into other signals. And you can even assign special functions like changing sections or changing the pages of your PDF on these signals. So on Key Stage, there are three places where you can add custom translators. The first one is on parts. So you go to translators and custom translators and there is this add translator. So this adds a new custom translator to this part and that translator only applies to that part. And another place where you can add custom translators is on tracks with this plus sign here. And these translators basically apply to all the parts connected to this track. And the third place where you can add translators is in globally on the song itself again with this plus sign and these translators basically apply to the whole song all the parts on the song so let's first talk about the basis of custom translators so let me create one on this part so every custom translator has an input and an output so you can choose the inputs from a list here you can choose any control change number or these you know program change pitch band but the easier way to do it is by pressing this mid learn button so I have my novation controller here. So suppose I want to change the functionality of this knob, which sends control change signal 21 uh, to something else. So let's change the output to volume. So now this knob acts as a volume on this part. And suppose on another part, I want to change the functionality to something else. So I create another custom translator on this part. By the way, you can see that C label over there. That means that that part has a custom translator and it's active. So let's also change. So now you, you realize that this 21 is on the top of this list. So key stage keeps track of all the custom translator numbers that you have used so far and basically orders them uh, depending on how frequent you use them. So I, I'm again choosing 21. And this time I want to change its functionality to modulation. So on this part, this, this knob controls the volume and on this part it controls the modulation. Okay, let's go into the advanced features of custom translators. So I press this advanced button here. And the first thing I want to talk about is this relative control here. So we have two parts and on this part this controls the modulation. Suppose I turn the modulation all the way down and I switch to this section. Once I move this knob, the volume suddenly drops down to this lower value of this knob. So this is a standard problem with knobs and non-motorized faders. Now relative control basically takes care of that problem. So if I turn the relative control on, on both of these translators, now key stage keeps track of the values of every parameter that goes through this translator. So there's this, that goes out of this track, sorry. So there's the modulation signal and the volume signal that I'm controlling right now. So this controls the volume. Now the modulation is all the way down, but it doesn't really change the modulation it looks like it doesn't change the modulation, but it basically changes the modulation relative to its current value. So even if this knob is all the way down, if I switch back to this section, it basically continues from where it's left off, the volume, and changes the value accordingly. And if the value of the volume, for example, reaches to one of the upper or lower, lower limits, so let's say the upper limit, let's reduce the upper limit a little bit. So I increase the volume all the way up. Get here, turn this knob all the way down. And even if I increase this knob, it doesn't change the volume. It cannot go above the upper limit. But if I turn it down, it just reduces the, the volume. So one way to use uh, relative control is 
using fade out so one of the cool feature for example if i turn the volume all the way down and suppose i have an initial volume of like 91 here when i activate this section the volume is 91 this fader cannot increase the volume anymore because both the upper and lower limits are zero so it can only decrease the volume so the upward, upward movement of this knob doesn't affect anything but if I turn the volume down, it just fades out. Okay, let's take a look at the other advanced functions. Let me increase the volume up again. So, when it's on relative control, this slider turns into speed. So, it basically changes how fast this knob affects the volume. How fast it changes the volume. When it's the relative control is off, this just turns into curve factor, just like the velocity curve. Uh, let me create another part here and... Let me de demonstrate this note translators. So custom translators can also change notes, but the advanced features basically changes. Okay, so I can't hear any notes because block incoming signals is on. So the note signals are blocked here. So I don't want that. I'm just going to turn this on, off. And suppose I also want to assign a functionality to these notes. Let's say, again, let's change the volume. So how does this work? So let's choose the lower range, the lower range of my keyboard, and let's assign the upper range, the upper range of my keyboard. Now, the, the lowest note that I have here, the, the C2 here, uh, sends the note and also sends the zero value for volume. And this sends the 127 value. You can also use the velocity value instead of the note value. So now instead of the note value, it uses the velocity value to translate it into a, a volume signal. So let's change the polarization. Take the volume upper limit down and turn the up lower limit up. So lower velocities basically results in higher volumes and higher velocities results in lower volumes. So like just like that. So the higher velocity basically turns the volume all the way down. Okay, let's talk about these special actions now. Now the input signal is this knob here, control chain 21. And instead of modulation, I'm gonna go into this special actions. Now I have a list of actions that can be performed, like octave up, octave down, or changing sections, or even changing the pages or your media files that is connected to this section. Let me demonstrate octave up. Now, whenever I choose a special action, you also have to define a trigger condition. So for control change numbers, you just have to define the trigger range. So whenever the translator receives a signal that matches this trigger range, that action is performed. So for this volume, for this function, so I'm gonna take this trigger function all the way up. So let me demonstrate. So I take the all the way up, again, just keeps increasing the octave. So this is not a really practical way to use the octave up function, but for example, if I instead choose note values, and suppose I want to do some kind of an arpe arpeggiator here, and I want to assign the single note, and also want to translate that note, the octave up function. So here's what happens. So every time I press E3, that part just goes one octave up. And whenever I select a section or select a part, the octave just resets to the center value. One of the things that I really frequently do in, in my live setup is assigning the next section function to a node. So for example, if I'm using my sustain pedal and I don't, I cannot really access to my uh, next section pedal, I just assign one note uh, to move to the next section. Let me create another section and now, so instead of octave up, I'm gonna choose this next section here. And suppose I want to assign this F sharp uh, to move to the next section. So while I'm playing, the moment I press this, 
notes, it just automatically moves to the next section. So let me demonstrate one more, one more example about special actions. So su suppose I want to assign these two buttons here on my keyboard to change the pages of my PDF. So I create a translator, a global translator here. And suppose this, I want this to be the next page. So I press this button to assign the input value. And for the special actions, I just choose next page. And similarly, I'm going to assign this function, this button, the previous page. Previous page. So let's go into the live control surface. I turn the global panel off. And I have this PDF file here. Let's also assign the same PDF file on all sections. Okay, so it looks like it wor it's working, but the problem is when I press the button, it goes to the next page, and I release the button, it also goes to the next page. And the reason is uh, I have these trigger ranges between 0 and 127. So when I press the button, it sends the value 127, and when I release the button, it just sends the value 0. But if I take this all the way up to 127, it just changes the pages when I press the button. So I can just and this actually applies all the track, all the sections and all the parts. Okay, now I want to talk about chains of custom translators. So if I select a part or a track or song itself, I can actually add multiple custom translators. And these are chained. So the output signal coming from this translator is routed to the second translator here, which is then manipulated by the second one. And you can change the order of these by simply sliding up and down through this arrow here. Now, you can also chain translators between uh, tracks, parts, and the song itself. And here you can change the order of this. So by default, uh, any signal coming to a track first is routed to the translators, uh, the custom translators of the song, the global translators, and then to the track tra track translators, and finally into the parts translators. Now let's let's make a demonstration with this setup here. So I have my song riser with this lead sound, and suppose that on this track globally, I want to assign this knob uh, the functionality of modulation. So this is control change 22. And suppose that I want to assign the function uh, modulation to this. So on any part, this acts like a modulation. But now suppose on this second part, I want to change the behavior of this. So I add a translator here. So the signals coming from this translator is first routed to, to the song translators but there aren't any song translators and then routed through the track translators so it goes through this translator and the signal is converted to modulation and now finally comes to this translator so I want to change the modulation signal which is control change number one into suppose into volume so if I go to the advanced section the original signal is blocked, so if I turn this off, so this both turns the volume down and also changes the, the modulation. And suppose I want to add another functionality to this knob just for this part. So I add another custom translator. So I want the modulation signals to go through. So I'm going to change the functionality, and this time I want to change the pitch band. So there are a couple of details that I want to talk about here. So this knob changes the volume and the pitch band simultaneously. And the original signal modulation is blocked here. Now suppose I want to change the pitch band from the center all the way down. So wha what are these numbers, 40 mi 47 and minus 47? So instead of 0 and 127, 
I decided to uh, scale the pitch band ranges between these numbers because these are more reasonable numbers when it comes to intervals and 12 semitones. So 47 represents the full pitch up and minus 47 represents full pitch down and zero represents center pitch. So suppose I want to change, I want to start from center and and suppose I don't want to go all, all the way down or one octave down and instead I want just to, I, I just want to go to the fifth down. So the fifth represents seven semitones and so minus 47 corresponds to 12 semitones which is basically multiplied by 4 so if I uh, take this down I can also change the numbers here uh, if I want to assign 7 semitones down I multiply that by 4 so now I'm going to choose 27 well let's actually change the uh, low range of volume, not zero, so that I can actually hear what I'm hearing. So you now this is actually a fifth down from this note. And also, which decreases the volume at the same time. So now the signals are chained, first coming into here, changing this control change to modulation, which acts like modulation on this part, but here, Instead, it changes the volume and the pitch band simultaneously. But if I change the order here, from part to track, this time, okay, this acts like a modulation, but now here, none of these translators function as they should. Because control change 22 signal first comes into this part, and there, are, there aren't any translators that changes it into anything, and then goes into the track, which which changes into, into modulation. So that's why the order of here matters. So why, would, why, why do we want to change the order of these translators? So let me demonstrate here. Suppose the song is all the way at the end. This is especially useful when you want to filter a certain parameter going into all the parts. So for example, so when the output is just these dash dashes, that means that that signal is filtered. So suppose that in, in a song, I just don't want to have any pitch band applied to any, any parts. So whatever translators I have anywhere, at the end of all the, say all the chain, the pitch band is filtered. So there won't be any pitch band modulations anywhere, even if I have some translators changing certain parameters to pitch bands, it's completely filtered throughout the song. So there's one final thing that I want to talk about. Uh, so on these parts, you probably have seen this bar here, which is always at the end of all translators. Let me turn them into basics. And it says block non-translated pitch band CC and aftertouch signals. So when this is on, all the control change signals and all the pitch band signals are basically blocked except the ones that are actually translated so suppose i want to translate pitch band into volume even if this is on it's considered as a translated signal and it basically goes through here okay why do we need that so i have the single track a single part here the speech band translates into volume signal and the original signal is blocked. But if I have an additional part here, the same pitch band signal also comes into this, this part and basically goes through it. So I really want to turn the, uh, this filter on for, for all the additional tracks so that the, or the original pitch band track is really blocked here on this custom translator. By the way, there is this save current state button here which basically allows you to save these states of your custom translators and also name them, which allows you to recall them on either different tracks or parts.